Meanwhile, on the Democratic side, President Biden won easily in Michigan. The only real opposition he faced came from voters casting ballots for uncommitted protesting his handling of the Israel-Hamas war. Now, joining our conversation this hour, Chief White House Correspondent for The New York Times, Peter Baker, Washington Post opinion editor and writer Alexi McCammond, and staff writer at The Atlantic, Frank Ford. Jonathan Lemire, Caddy Kay, still with us as well, Joe. Uh, yeah, Peter Baker, the, uh, Joe Biden gave up maybe 12, 13 uh, percent. You had Barack Obama in 2012 give up about 11 percent. I don't see panic inside the White House. Uh, they feel like they still have a still have a, a way to go here. But but what do they think they need to do between now and November to win those voters back? They just got to end the war. <laughs> That's as simple as that. They got to end the war. The problem for them is the timetable they thought this was going to play out on has not played out the way they wanted. They hoped that the war in Gaza would be over in January so that by summer we'd be on to reconstruction and peacemaking and the voters who were mad at them, particularly younger voters and obviously Arab American voters, would be less mad, at least, and maybe less likely to vote against them as a result, maybe focused on the things that Biden hopes to bring to the region and make things better for the Palestinians. They're not on that timetable. Israelis and Bibi Netanyahu are not cooperating in that regard. That's why you heard the president on Monday, I was with him in New York, say in an ice cream shop of all places, that yeah. he thought a, a ceasefire was in the works and almost here, partly because he wants to believe it. Uh, right. And it may not be true, but maybe maybe it is. If it is, then maybe they can get past this moment and, and begin to uh, shift away from the anger these voters feel. But for the moment, right. that's the biggest thing. Well, and, and it's actually in Israel's best interest that they get to that point, Alexei. The reason why is that it, we were talking about it last hour. This is not just about Arab American voters in Michigan. Yeah. If Israelis are looking upon American politics with contempt, going, oh, they're going to sacrifice our security for a couple of votes in Michigan. No, this is about the fact that the cause of Israel is losing a generation. Right. It's not an overstatement. You look at the numbers and you look how younger Americans in a shocking way yes. have turned away from Israel and, uh, and, and are uh, very aggressively supporting the Palestinian cause and supporting some pretty extreme positions. I mean, and I've watched in real time, my younger sister is out in Seattle. Mm -hmm. She's 27 and, you know, has got a bunch of liberal friends out there. And literally, I watched over time from the beginning of the war on their Instagram stories and other mm -hmm. social media. It was in the beginning sort of um, just more informative. What's going on mm -hmm. very quickly changed to being pro-Palestinian. Look at what's happening. This is a genocide. Can you believe that we're supporting this? You cannot vote for anyone who uses our taxpayer dollars to support something like this. And it's continuing through this day. And that is what is so shocking to me is how many young people are posting about these causes and about genocide and foreign right. policy day in and day out, interspersed with other things, right, that they're interested in, like Love is Blind on Netflix or right. some other meme. But they're yeah. literally still talking about this. The, the more fascinating thing to me is when you look at Biden's TikToks or the Instagram mm -hmm. posts that they're doing with influencers mm -hmm. and they're like, oh my gosh, 250 million people saw this post. Look at the comments. Yeah. They're young people being like, hey, what about these two Palestinian journalists who were killed? Do you have anything to say about that? Or right. what about what's going on in Rafa? Do you have something to say about that? They're not only holding these folks accountable, they're educating other young people who are going to the comments who might not know, being like, right. oh, wait a second, let me look yeah. that up. So